Spimisor's voice. Now, this is another series on our desktop chemistry. What I have over here is some waste cell liquor from the cathode chamber of my chloroalkali cell. This would be a little worse than your typical chlorate cells uh, liquor. This is actually highly alkaline. Now, you're wondering how exactly does pH control in a chlorate cell work without using hydrochloric acid and how I'm able to do it in such a passive manner? Well, right over here is a solution of calcium chloride. It's saturated, granted, but that's just because it's a demonstration. Like, I can even mix in some sodium chloride in here and make, it, make the conditions exactly alike. But overall, I just have to demonstrate the general reaction that's going to happen. So I have in here some sodium hydroxide, sodium hypochlorite madness that came from a chloroalkali cell. It's essentially waste. It's bleach though. And what I have over here is calcium chloride. Now what's going to happen is as soon as I pour this, the uh, calcium hydroxide will immediately precipitate out because it is far less soluble, thus keeping the pH neutral. You know, if this was a chloroalkali, I mean, if this was a chlorate cell. However, over here, it's just going to precipitate out some white fluffy stuff. I mean, as you can see, that's kind of milk right now. So, yeah. Essentially, these, this is what ends up caking your electrodes. But as this builds up, your pH will remain neutral. And that is how you can control the pH of your chlorate cells without having to bother with using an acid injection system. Instead, you can just add about 10% of its weight in calcium chloride and in terms of the electrolyte. And then you will end up having the pH stay at 7 throughout the entire run. It ain't, it might, it ain't going up or down. It's a buffer. You'll just see some white caking on your electrode.